for all the atrocities and the problems that are going on in Africa. They are they fully absolve themselves of the blame. France has never done anything wrong in Africa. France has never stolen resources. France has never colonized Africa. France has never exploited the people of Africa. France has never tried to manipulate politics and business for its influence, growth, and development or at least that's what the ambassador in South Africa is saying. But does that make it true? The, the problem is, uh, you know, they are blaming France for all the problems in, in Africa. Uh, we are responsible for, for everything. I mean, France or the West or uh, someone else, there is always someone to blame, you know, for all the, the challenges of, uh, of Africa. So today is France. And uh, we don't see uh, scapegoating. Uh, as uh, as a proper policy, uh, I think it's not fair to scapegoat uh, or to blame uh, friends. Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of these sessions. My name is Andrea Ganga. I am a business journalist by profession, and I always come out here to talk to you about Martyrs Africa, Black people, Black empowerment, and how we can rise up and take space at the global scene and claim our rightful place and space and seat at the table. Um, a lot has been going on on the African continent with regards to the influence that France has on the continent. Now, just a little bit of background. There's something called Franc Afrique, and this is a partnership, but a very one-sided partnership between France and African countries, where France continues to have influence in politics, economics, development, and not the kind of influence that has the interest of Africans at heart, but the kind of influence that ensures that France continues to benefit from perpetual exploitation of Africa, African resources, and African labor. Now, if you doubt this to be true, look at many of the Sahel countries and Francophone countries that France still had or rather France colonized. France continues to have massive influence in these countries. We will not even talk about some of the terms and conditions with which these African countries were granted independence on. It's just even in the modern day and age where these countries are purported to be independent, they are not independent because France continues to have a say in how these countries govern themselves. For example, France had over 5,000 troops on the African continent um, helping us fight insurgencies, particularly in the Sahel region. And when um, insurgencies continued to rise and African leaders were asking, so why are you guys here? What value do you add? France then said, hey, 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 hell no. You can't blame us for your political failure. Okay, you will have to take part of the blame if you say that you're coming to help me solve a problem. And the problem is technically not going away. Either you're part of the problem or you're enjoying the problem. And we've seen several military coups in the Sahel, and one of the main things that these military leaders do immediately they get into power is say they do not want France military barracks in these countries. Now, this is a double-edged sword because nobody is saying that military rule is the best, but again, what do these people know about the French military and the things that they do behind closed doors that civilians do not know? And so with all the things going on in um, the Sahel region and former French colonies, um, we are seeing the rest of Africa joining these countries in calling for France to get out of the African continent. We've seen protests all over the continent and most recently we had protests in South Africa. Now the way Western media covered this protest is very eye-opening and also it raises a lot of questions because I was reading an article by a publication from the West and it said South Africa which is struggling with floods and all the problems has time to demonstrate against French influence on the continent two things can coexist South Africans can have their own challenges but they can stand in solidarity with their other African brothers that are suffering under the chokehold of France and so during these South African demonstrations led by the leader of EFF, Julius Malema, they had some um, demands that were being made that Africa needs to get out of Africa, uh, France needs to get out of Africa rather, and also um, France cannot continue to benefit by perpetually exploiting Africa. If you're going to do business with us, let it be on fair terms. We are not saying give us 50-50, but can, 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 can it be 
in a manner that dignifies the people that work there you know if you're going to explore oil can you ensure that you don't damage the environment the water that people use is clean can you ensure that um you're teaching the people some of the resources are trickling down back to the country but no france does not want to do that it wants to continue operating with impunity and when its ambassador was confronted in south africa by a journalist and asked um what he makes of these demands he said you cannot blame france for the problems that africa is going through uh, the eff uh, came to us uh, legally and peacefully as a demonstration so it was normal to engage a dialogue with them so we uh, took over their their message and their uh, their statements but the, the problem is uh, you know, they are blaming France for all the problems in, in Africa. Uh, we are responsible for, for everything. I mean, France or the West or uh, someone else, there is always someone to blame, you know, for all the, the challenges of, uh, of Africa. So today is France. And uh, we don't see uh, scapegoating uh, as, uh, as a proper policy. Uh, I think it's not fair to scapegoat uh, or to blame uh, France. So what we answer is that France today is a partner of Africa, is a friend of the African nations. We stand for an independent Africa, a sovereign Africa, and we want to strengthen our bonds with Africa. The journalist was a very good journalist who was asking these questions. And in realizing that the French ambassador was not going to, to sort of take any form of responsibility, she directly asked the question, she asked, would you say that France is responsible for some of the atrocities that it's been accused of committing on the continent, which have been documented, there's literature, there's history, and there's human proof of what you've done and continue to do um, in the continent. And, 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 and the ambassador was very, was very diplomatic, so to say, in the way he answered the question. He said, oh, no, no, we are partners, you know, we are friends of Africa. Um, President Tabombeki even joked that France is Africa. No, France is not Africa. France continues and perpetually exploits Africa. And in saying that, what the president was actually saying is France does not exist without Africa, African resources the African continent and the African people who continue to provide cheap and borderline free labor with no proper documentation, no proper rights in the country at the expense of growth back at home. Well, we, as a partner, you know, we share a long history, a history with uh, uh, difficult hours and, and, and beautiful hours. Uh, there are lots of human uh, links between Africa and France. And even uh, President Thabo Mbeki once said that France is an African country, meaning that we have these long lasting ties and, and history with the continent. So of course, we are ready to look at the history together. We are ready to take uh, account the past. We have to live with it. But today, there is, I think, uh, an ongoing, very vibrant uh, relation and cooperation between France and the African nations. And what we do on a daily basis is to stand by the African people and to stand by the African nations. President Macron has still been on the spotlight when it comes to just um, France relations in Africa and continuous dominance on the continent. For example, earlier on when we were starting, he said France um, has over 3,000 um, soldiers on the African continent and it has several military bases on the African continent. Now, the, the, the Western obsession with creating bases in Africa is something that we'll discuss on another day, but the rate at which France was doing this was, was, was alarming. And so many of these leaders were saying, just scale it back. And while President Macron was open to scaling it back, he was like, oh, no, 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 we're going to scale it back, but we will not fully leave the continent. We are still going to be here. We are still going to maintain our troops here. And even though we are going to Africanize some of these military bases, we'll still have boots on the ground. My question is, for what? Why do you need boots on the ground? Well, again, we are talking about independent countries. And uh, I think it's not uh, you know, right to, to blame France for, for the situation and, and all the challenges. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the military presence, there are indeed military soldiers in Africa, but always when the African governments are requesting these French soldiers to be on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's really a partnership, it's mutual. It's when we need together, for example, to face the terrorist threats or terrorist groups 
then we fight together. But we are never imposing or forcing a country or a people to accept the French military presence. Mm -hmm. We are working under the aegis of the Uni United Nations mm -hmm. with our international partners. And that's always like it today. And we are transparent and reliable partners. It's this kind of meddling and interference that continues to stifle African growth and African democracies. Because if you keep interfering, if you have a hand in politics, if you have a hand in military, if you have a hand in business, if you have a hand in, in the people that we're putting in office, how then will African countries and some of these African democracies grow, make their mistakes, learn and move past it? Because every move that they make is either has to be calculated or is influenced by you, then where's the autonomy, where's the independence that they gained years back? Well, I think these countries, uh, I mean, all around Africa, they are independent. Mm -hmm. What they need to build now is stronger democracies and uh, we are at their side it's not france that prevents uh, prevents you know these uh, african partners mm -hmm. from being more uh, you know independent mm -hmm. that's that's not our view of the situation at all and uh, what we can do is to support democratic uh, actors on the ground the civil society uh, women empowerment uh, to face our common challenges. Mm -hmm. That's really our policy today vis-a-vis uh, -vis Africa. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about what the ambassador had to say. Do you agree with him that half of the problems that Africa is going through is not because of France and we just keep quoting France? Or do you believe that it's high time that France and many other Western African countries or rather West or the West begins taking responsibility for some of the things that they've done in Africa and the role that um, their actions have played in derailing growth and development on the continent. Thank you so much for watching.